a lot of people have opinions, right, Jude, on how our foam cannon is. Uh, that is to say, a lot of people don't like it. So I think we have a couple designs here and you know we'd like feedback on from you guys. Hey everybody, it's James from Active and today we have a bit of a new segment where we want to let you guys inside to some of our product development process and we're trying to decide what we want to build, how we're going to build it and of course how we're going to design it. So today we're going to talk about accessories in specific because I know we get a lot of requests online for accessories and so forth to pair with the 2.0. I have James Casey, who is our lead industrial designer for all of the active products. And many of you probably have come into contact with Jude, who manages all aspects of our e-commerce direct consumer and sales parts for active. So part of what we've been trying to do here at active is not just rebrand stuff if we don't have to, and really try to find what is kind of that insight or what is that additional feature or benefit we can add to the product, whether it's through specification or through design to make the product better than what's on the market out there. And of course, a lot of times we take inspiration from other products in the market. We take inspiration from the professional market. Um, and of course we take inspiration and in learning from the feedback we get from customers. Um, who I think provide you with feedback all the time. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, why don't we just dive into it? Some of the things we've been discussing. So I know a lot of people have opinions, right, Jude, on how our foam cannon is. That is to say a lot of people don't like it or don't even give it a chance and just sub it out for a bunch of other units in the market, right? So I think we have a couple designs here. And so what I want to kind of describe a bit is this is obviously just really the design phase, right? So maybe JC, you can talk a bit about what you did here. Sure. Yeah. This is, you know, again, this is very early in the design phase. And so I think we wanted to look at, you know, what would be a different way to think about this? The bottle is obviously a clear departure of what we normally find. And this was a consideration. Uh, one, it was, it made for a, a very efficient packaging. Uh, so we could get a maxed out bottle in a smaller box. And then as well, we wanted it to be, you know, kind of reminiscent of the styling of the 2.0. It was sort of complementary with the rest of it. This is probably like the first, you could say, sketch of a foam cannon. And then as we go, you'll see like, you know, we start to get a little bit more iterative in the, you know, finishing and grips and all that. Okay, and Jude, so what are some of the technical things that customers have been complaining about, asking for? Of course, we also look at what people like about some of our co competitions. Yeah. So how have we incorporated some of that thinking into this design? So um, looking at the initial phone cannon that we launched, um, some of the failure points of that product was, um, it was very basic in design. And um, this comes from the shape of the bottle to the bottle quality. Um, for example, there was no markings on the bottle um, to measure the level of liquid. Um, the neck of the fork cannon was too narrow, so it was not really uh, uh, conducive for proper pouring of liquids. It was not a really efficient system. And also when it comes to the foam cannon nozzle, it was kind of a very basic nozzle that was all already uh, prevalent in the market or available in the market for a much lower price point. So all these factors were really giving us the edge against those brands or competitors we want to benchmark against. So this really made us lose out in terms of mind share and consideration from the consumer. This design is something that we worked with JC and it's kind of it's kind of still very early stages. So it's kind of like a half big product. So what we wanted to do is <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, it's uh, so a <clears throat> the bottle design, like JC mentioned, uh, was uh, something that we wanted to be well, in line with the two point or the shape of the pressure washer itself, and that's kind of why we um, went down this route. But in addition to that, like we wanted to give the consumer an option of providing more than a thousand ml, whether you use it or not is up to you. But nobody out there in the market really gives you a big bottle. And I guess the shape kind of accommodates the ability to do that. Mm. And also keep the packaging very concise, which helps active save on uh, freight and shipping. 
and also it has a biomimic design which helps with the pouring of liquids and so on but again biomimic is a half big design is we still haven't really gone about the engineering of the nose bits right it's still the same 20 dollar amazon basics um mm. four cannon head yeah so this is kind of uh some of the consumer feedback and comments that i've seen across many videos of uh, youtube influencers and so on talking about talking about different film cannons and how it has influenced how we are going about the direction of this uh, design yeah i mean i mean some of the questions i have and again this i think the purpose to discuss this stuff is you know the question around is this even the right size of bottle our customers ask me for more capacity um because they feel like they don't have to refill it as often or do they want a smaller bottle so they don't waste soap because how many customers are actually pouring the soap back in that they don't use yeah so these are the things that we haven't even really figured out yet yep. and you know we'd like feedback on from you guys i think some of the basic things that we wanted to address for sure was the wide mouth opening and the ability for this to stand up on its own in case you wanted to set it down. So, I mean, those are probably the only two design imperatives at the moment. I think you'll see here, you know, JC does a lot of different renderings and so forth of what we want to look like. And then we start getting into how it might look with the foam cannon that we're going to design. Yeah. Right. And a so key feature of the nozzle is uh, the existing one kind of just has the fan and jet spray, so you can't really do any adjustments on any vertical or horizontal spray patterns. And that getting around that has been a bit tricky because I think there are some existing patterns that are competitors own, like for example, the NTM and the right. RATS, who have certain mechanisms that they use. So it's kind of a challenge for us to kind of figure out how we address that with our own unique mechanism. Right. Um, and so you'll see just different designs and color renderings of the top. Some of them get pretty wild up there and some of them are pretty basic. Um, I think some things we'll note too, I think from a design point of view that customers might find interesting is I think here we always try to incorporate design elements that don't cost more money. I mean, I think design is always such a subjective thing and you certainly don't want to waste a lot of money adding in design elements that cost a lot of money that customers may or may not like or appreciate. So I think things like the emboss here, or even the embossment on the bottle, these things don't cost any more money to build, but certainly can add to the design element of the product. I think when you get into different materials like this to this, then I think you get into some cost differences, right? Yeah. yeah. Also, when it comes to the, um, the uh, lid of the uh, nozzle to the bottle, I think on that rendering, it's all brass. Yeah. So that will be a design element that will be really costly so yeah. is it preferred to be in plastic or is it something that you would like or you think it's cool uh for it to be yeah i think it depends on what we're trying to who we're trying to appeal to how much you're selling for and of course if you break it down is there really any benefit to having that in a different material right aside from just looking cool yeah i think also most people most people would agree that um having a plastic bottle and a metal cap is not really ideal because of cross threading right so usually someone is preferred to have a plastic on plastic, but if you're using a gasket and a twist lock mechanism, then maybe the, 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 the opinions might change. That's something we need to consider uh, or get feedback on um, when developing the uh, finalized uh, version of this. But I think, again, what do you guys think? I think that's really kind of what we're trying to share and trying to get some more information on is are there elements of this design or other designs that we are missing ourselves or haven't thought of that we want to incorporate into our design here? And here are a couple more close-ups, I guess, of the different combinations, um, you know, different branding combinations and so forth. Um, yeah, so at this stage, anything is really possible. I think most of these variations don't have a big impact on cost. Yeah, that'd be right. Um, so yeah, at a design phase, this is what you're trying to do. I mean, this is obviously a different material. Um, this might have a bigger impact on cost. Um, but again, they all look pretty neat to me at this stage. So some feedback would be, would be ideal. Sure. Yeah. Anything else you want to say about the design? Well, yeah, I mean, keep skipping ahead here. This is still like, and now what perfume models? <laughs> yeah, a little bit of that. Did, but here we start to say, well, what if we could shrink the, the actual nozzle size down? That was again, uh, like I think, go to the next slide too. Right, so here, there you can see. So this is the longer one, but our mechanism actually only goes here. 
So we thought, well, what if we did it stubby? And then again, looking at considerations about packaging, shrinking this down, possibly we could have it so this would fit inside the bottle during uh, shipment to really maximize our uh, efficiency that way. Um, and then looking at different ways uh, to deal with this grip. So this is a, it's a kind of a folded aesthetic. Um, it's, it's interesting, uh, but it's just exploratory here. And also adding some gripping on the twist and lock. The idea there would be that you could twist it, remove it, and then the, the nozzle top could be uh, adjustable um, should it not line up perfectly. That, that allows the, the user a bit of a wiggle wing. And just, Drew just had mentioned that some people have complained that there was no on-gun storage for nozzles or for the tips. Yeah. Um, obviously, aesthetic-wise, I don't think we incorporated it. We didn't want to. We didn't want to dis disrupt the shape. But, you know, if you look at the typical user experience, if the typical customer has really one nozzle for, call it, you know, getting the car wet and rinsing, and then one nozzle and then uses the soap, the foam cannon, would that be beneficial to have a place to store that other nozzle on the foam can? With the intention being, if the customer is only using the two, then it'd be convenient for him to switch on and off. But that might look funny too. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So. Um, another option was to kind of see how we can incorporate that to the bend lance design. But of course, um, even looking at sales in general of competition and what moves, uh, a lot like the extension one does not sell as well as a foam cannon or right. a, a shotgun when we consider it in third party accessories. So right. is it worthwhile having um, storage options on the lance, the plastic bit of it? So that could actually give actor the benefit of wanting to sell that more because people have the benefit. Sure. For, for an item that is underselling, add value to it too. Uh, and so more. Yeah. Mm. These look very perfume like. Yeah. Yeah. Remind me of like foam air fresheners now. Hey guys, thanks for watching our foam cannon development video. We're always looking for ideas, suggestions, feedback uh, to our products. The input from you guys for some of our newer products is very much appreciated. So hope you like the video. Again, leave any comments or ideas you have and hopefully they'll become real products uh, in the future. Also look up for part two of this video where we're gonna talk about other things like accessories and guns and nozzles and lances and, and so forth. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, and as always, thanks for your support.